Hey guys, it's Laxline here with another paint through video. In this video, along with a brilliant scientist from the city of Aetherreach, we discover that the morgue which holds the victims of the deadly virus outbreak in Aetherreach is overrun by a fatal fungus, giving him a vital clue into the nature of this contagion. This particular painting was quite challenging to paint, as I started this one with a quite different process. I wanted to challenge myself by flying head into a thunderstorm. First, I created a color prototype from which I could extract a workable palette from. But why create such a proto palette in the first place? Why not use that same color palette directly and paint with it? It was because the proto palette was too chaotic, too jarring to look at. Imagine looking at the midday sun on a bright day directly with your naked eyes. Can you stare at it for more than a second? I don't think so. If you want to look at it, you need very dark sunglasses, right? And still you'd have to squint your eyes. The proto palette is to the painting, what the sun is to your naked eyes, and through the sunglasses of intuition and common sense, I could distill that vibrant energy into a meaningful painting. The point of the painting was to showcase the chaotic and deep root formation of the fungus as it slowly dissolves and grows out of a corpse. It had to be mysterious, dangerous, but also fascinating and in a morbid sense, beautiful. I tried to bring it out by giving the corpse a very vibrant pink, neon green and blue color scheme, something that justified the story of the fungus, as it left its residue on everything it came in contact with. The fleshy red venations being the main body of the fungus that take root dissolving organic material and shredding itself. I wanted to show an explosive fungus growth, bursting out of the corpse, but didn't really know how to do that, or show that sense of movement in a still painting. But then I remembered an old painting, a very old painting actually, and it's from the murals on the ancient Greek city of Pompeii. In this painting, you feel like you're moving forward from left to right, and there's a strong sense of progression, movement, even though the painting is static. That's because the figures in the painting overlap the black pillars. When you look at the painting, those black pillars become a visual beat and the figures become notes and chords of that beat. Taking my cues, I use those to make patches of light and dark on the painting so that the fungus could become a sort of melody over that beat. Now, Let's expand on the topic from last week. Good art, bad art, and the gray airs in between. I've received some interesting responses from you guys. One of the ideas were that there is no such thing as good art or bad art, and there is only art that you can ignore or can't ignore. That certainly makes things both easier and difficult. It's easy to say that bad art gets ignored, even if it is masterly executed. And good art captures attention. Even if it is so bad that it's good, The Room, Sharknado, they see Spider-Man being prime examples. But if that is the case, then is it even bad art? But then what is noticed or ignored by one is not always the same as another. If a hundred people collectively notice or ignore something, does it mean that it is the same for the hundred and first person that comes around? Does a collectively perceived truth define an objective fact, or is it the other way around? Can there ever be an objective fact, as everything is viewed from one perspective or the other? There's a famous photon-particle experiment called the double-slit experiment that attempted to study the nature of light and answer the question of whether light is a particle or a wave. The interesting result from this experiment was that the nature of light changes from particle to wave depending on whether it is observed or not. When actively observed, the photons acted like particles. When not, they acted as waves. This led to many puzzling questions about the nature of reality, one of which being, does all of reality change when actively observed by someone? You might be wondering what the hell has this all got to do with art and painting, but consider this. Does a work of art change its nature because one, ten, a hundred, or even a thousand people look at it? What if those thousand people ignored another piece of art? Does that change the nature of that piece? 
Or does that change the nature of the artist? If you're an artist, tell me this. What would you do if you were suddenly the center of attention of a thousand people? Or collectively ignored or blocked by a thousand people? Let me know in the comments.